I would say in February or March, we were still not clear if it's going to hit us or not. And then it hit us with a really big bang. Many of us in India felt that the infrastructure was so bad that it would collapse. We didn't know how this would progress. We didn't know the implications. We didn't know the extent to which this uh, would affect our lives, our businesses. In hindsight, the situation seems clear. But if you transport yourselves back, no one knew anything. There was just uncertainty. Positive COVID test is not going to be enough. We need to know how we track, how we trace. Where are the tests happening? Where are the infections spreading? This was an enemy that no one could see. Where would you lock down? Where would you not want to lock down? The beast was still unknown. Where will hospitals get full? Well, where will beds get full? There was just no understanding of what is going to happen next. Even if half a percent, one percent people die, it would have meant and it means lakhs of people dying. It was a mega, mega task. No one was really prepared to face the reality of the, the enormity of the challenge. And only those states who are ahead of the curve, they will be able to manage the situation. That's when we knew that COVID-19 would be fought by doctors, but also by data scientists. On the 4th of March, I wrote to the Indian Administrative Services, offering them assistance. But then it wasn't even called a pandemic yet. WHO has declared the novel coronavirus outbreak as a global pandemic. India reports its first death due to COVID-19. Total cases cross 100. Center orders nationwide lockdown for 21 days. We waited. And then suddenly, on 21st March, I got a call from the government. Can you guys jump in? Within hours, we were talking to the municipal commissioner and very quickly we were part of 50 different WhatsApp groups uh, uh, of different uh, sets of people looking to help. Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges countrymen to stay indoors and help break the chain of COVID-19 infection. Warns against neglecting to follow instructions placed by lockdown states. Things became overwhelming very fast. Our first task was, how are we going to get the data? So we mapped out the sources. Then we designed the data lakes that would hold the data, that would then feed into the data models, that would then predict how the virus was going to spread. This was the secret sauce that made Fractal the central point. We realized that all our actions are actually dependent on how quickly and how good quality information uh, which we receive. The data was coming from all places and it was a real challenge to decipher all this data. It's basically garbage in, garbage out. If the data is polluted, your results are going to be wrong and it's going to be incorrect and decisions are going to be wrongly taken. We've got some of the best brains in the country and we've got enough science to put behind this biased data to make sense out of it. Initially, health officials would visit homes and contact trace with uh, pen and paper. But when you're in a full PPE kit, you really can't see what you're actually writing and that multiplied the errors. For example, Nair Hospital was spelled 70 different ways. Imagine a four-letter word could be spelled 70 different ways. And that's the place A rescued us. Uh, using NLP to uh, cleanse the data was one of the key solutions that we brought to the table. Due to social stigma, people uh, would give uh, incorrect information, uh, insufficient information. We harnessed the power of fuzzy logic for uh, correcting the names. We fed the city uh, property tax information into our AI learning algorithms to cleanse the data and uh, bring a uniqueness uh, of uh, various address references. We needed to see the situation in a geospatial way. Once we saw how massive the scale was, I asked the then Municipal Commissioner of Mumbai, what kept him awake in the night? He said, I just want to prevent the deaths. At that point, India believed that there was no community transmission. So we modeled the spread. And the data was clearly showing that Mumbai was a hotbed and the disease was about to go out of hand. We then realized that we urgently needed to scale these models that we built. The disease would spread a lot faster if the right containment zone recommendation was not made. So we are a population of 125 crores. So that's the potential number of cases that could have been infected. Usually it takes about four to six weeks to build models of this kind. 
um, we had to do it in a week. In many ways, this was like a war effort. We were putting in 20 hour days and we were risking burnout of the best people at Fractal. And from a result standpoint, there were no results to see because we were working like crazy, but the number of cases, number of fatalities, number of people in ICUs was just going up. So we have no idea if you're even winning. So trying to model and predict how this pandemic is going to play out in the long run just showed us how small we are in front of nature. We were going on on a limb and making some very crucial recommendations. And you could be blamed for anything, but crisis really reveals your values. And we were not afraid to do the right thing. Because testing facilities were not available in remote hospitals, we had already designed a solution which could diagnose X-rays on the cloud. And we were using this across the globe for uh, detecting tuberculosis. And when COVID came about, we repurposed this technology for COVID. The first COVID hospital in Mumbai did not have digital X-rays. So our employees had to actually go into the heart of COVID to train uh, the nurses and the technicians there to be able to take pictures of the X-rays and digitize them using their mobile phones, which were then processed uh, by our algorithm. Everyone was looking at death rates and hospitalization rates and spread rates, but they were looking at these in isolation. Uh, we wanted to triangulate these data sources to see if there's a hidden trend. And what we did was we mapped the regions on a 2D map to understand what the hotspots were. So analytics was able to help us identify places where the total number of cases were low, but the rate of spread was high. That led us to discover that contact tracing was dangerously low there and subsequently the government then went and tightened the strings there. If I come to now I'm positive, I, without knowing that whether I need a hospital bed or not, I land up, land up in a hospital bed. And so it is, the, that resource goes best. Uh, at some point around July when we did the initial analysis, we realized that about 70% of the beds were occupied by asymptomatic patients. And that was leading to a lot of crunch within the hospital uh, admission systems. We thought we have to have a system where right kind of people will go to right hospital bed. So we built a system uh, which would uh, directly take all of the positive uh, patients from ICMR. They would evaluate the patients, whether they were symptomatic or asymptomatic, and based on a set of criteria from the health department, they would then identify people that would get into hospitals, and they would also classify people that can recover at home. So this entire process would be completed within four hours of a person testing positive, and this really helped the government allocate the right beds and also the right hospitals for people requiring care. The data only told us that we don't need many uh, uh, these ventilators, which was the idea in the beginning, because that was the perception. Then we realized more than ventilators, what is needed are oxygenated beds. So then we, uh, we took a policy decision that wherever we have COVID facilities, at least 60% of the beds, we should make them oxygenated. This helped in uh, uh, reducing the preventable deaths uh, for people under 45 age group from almost 100 to 55 a day. This is an insight uh, only AI uh, can bring to the table. So one can think of data science and, and think that these are just numbers. And what is there in numbers? There's so much more to humanity and human life and emotions. But if you actually look a little deeper, the data really tells a story. Use of data analytics and the data-driven insights has helped us in saving life and even containing, managing the pandemic in a much uh, better way. And the best way we have conquered it is through our behavior and through our invention, both, and through our technology. With the help of uh, these algorithms, which actually fed into a dashboard, we were able to get more control of the decision-making process. We were able to look ahead uh, two weeks in advance on what is going to be the spread of infection in different locations of the state, which is something which mattered quite a lot to us. Over 30 of the tech companies, including Fractal, came together to work together and create end-to-end -end solution. That is something you will not see anywhere else in the world. It has created so much impact and so much trust that uh, this model, I think, is going to continue for a, for a long period of time. And I'm really excited about that. When we hear about this phase of humanity in history, people are going to ask themselves, where were we? What role did we play? If I look back, I can't believe we went through so much. People have this strange idea that AI is unnatural, but without the humans programming it, nothing would be possible. Looking back, I'm left with a feeling of uh, satisfaction and also gratitude. 
in India, the jumbo centers that have been set up might not have been if the prediction models had not uh, forewarned us. I think history will show that we rose to the occasion. We contributed. We played our part in solving the problem.